Hello bookworms! Today I'm here to do the coffee book tag. I'm so excited to do this one. I have with me my Disney fairy tale collection Rapunzel mug. I don't actually drink that much coffee. Um, I tend to be a tea drinker, but I'm excited about this tag nonetheless. So I'm gonna go ahead and get right into it. The tag was created by Bangity Bangs and I will leave a link to the original tag down below so you can check that one out when you finish watching my video if you so desire. Um, the first question is black coffee. Name a series that is tough to get into but has a very strong cult following of fans. So for this series, I chose Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones has probably some of the craziest, most intense fans of like any series, but there are five of these very long, very dense, very dense books. So um, while they are amazing, I have not yet read all of them because it takes a lot of time. They are hard to get into in that sense that you just really need to block out like a ton of time to get through them. The second question is Peppermint Mocha. Name a book or series that gets more popular in the winter or festive season. For that, I chose a relatively new book, which is My True Love Gave to Me. Might be a little bit hard to see because it's a very light blue cover. I have the UK edition with the pretty pink pages, but this book just came out last uh, October and the reason that I feel like this is going to get more popular during Christmas time in future years to come is because it has a fantastic collection of authors. Um, there are 12 short stories, so even if you don't want to reread the entire book, you still have the option of reading one or two of your favorites. Like if you just find that you have a few spare extra moments or something, you want to sit by your Christmas tree, pull out this book, make some hot chocolate, all that kind of stuff. Speaking of hot chocolate, the next question is hot chocolate, your favorite children's book. This was the easiest one to pick, which is Harry Potter. Children, adult, whatever, Harry Potter is my favorite series of all time and it's very comforting. So I think that the hot chocolate tag is very fitting because it's something that you can just go back to again and again when you just want comfort and you know something that you're familiar with and characters that you just want to relive their experiences with. Next is Double Shot of Espresso. Name a book or series that kept you on the edge of your seat from start until finish. I chose Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson, which I just read very recently. It was immediately interesting from like the first page. I have never expected that of a book. Usually it'll take me, you know, at least like a good 30, 40 pages to kind of get used to characters and get into the story. This, I was just immediately like, oh my God, there's so much happening and it's right in the beginning and I need to keep reading and keep reading and find out what's gonna happen next. So good job, Brandon Sanderson. Next is Starbucks. Name a book that you just see everywhere. Ironically, this one, I am choosing Gillian Flynn's Gone Girl, which will soon appear above my hand. Um, I do not own it, but it is one of those books that I just see in every single bookstore that I go into, you know, every airport, every like convenience store. If there's one book that they're selling, it's Gone Girl. I see it on the subway. I see it everywhere. It's just all over the place. Next is Hipster Coffee Shop. Give a shout out to an indie author. I choose Jandy Nelson. I just finished her first book, um, The Sky is Everywhere, and oh my God, it was fantastic. Um, the main character just lost her sister and she's trying to like cope with the loss and she has these two boys. One is her sister's boyfriend um, at the time that she died and the other one is a new boy that's in town so it's it says up here one boy helps her remember the other helps her forget. It's just so well written and so interesting and the way that the main character like channels her emotions into all these different like mini poems and she writes them on papers that she leaves all around town. It's just, oh, it's so good. Next is, whoops, I accidentally got decaf. Name a book that you were expecting more from. This is probably going to be an unpopular opinion, but I'm actually gonna pick The Hunger Games. Don't get me wrong, I really love the series. I really love Katniss as a character, but I just felt like it should have been so much longer. Like there was so much more detail that I wanted out of the first book. I remember reading it and being like, 
wait, this is already happening? Wait, they're already going to the games? How is this gonna be three books? What's gonna happen? And now that I've read the rest of it, I know why the first set of games is completed within the first book, but I felt like it could have been like an extra 200 pages and I would have been a lot more satisfied with more detail. The last question is the perfect blend. Name a book that was both bitter and sweet, but ultimately satisfying. For this book, I chose The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. This book is so sad, but so beautiful, and it just doesn't turn out the way that you'd expect. I know like everyone in the world has read it, but I would say that, you know, like even in dealing with those sad moments, the way that it ends is just totally worth it because it's such a great story about this girl Hazel and you just like, you're just rooting for her and I just love it. It was very satisfying. So that is it for the coffee tag. I tag Christina Horner, Alexa Loves Books, literally Tara, and anyone else who wants to make a video. Bye! Adjust this necklace. The second tag, the second question, the next tag is hot chocolate. Or the next question is hot chocolate. next one. Oh, okay. I can't breathe. <coughs> no, just a better voice. We might want to watch some of it because I feel like, um, I don't know if I should refilm any of it when I was like dying. <laughs>